But moving on. So for them to run with this globe theory, they needed a force, a force to keep everything in place. But a force that was strong enough to keep all the oceans stuck on Earth, but weak enough not to sink the sailboats. Okay. Strong enough to bring the entire atmosphere at the brink's next speed, but weak enough to let birds and bugs and everything fly in every direction that they want to fly in. A force so strong that it could make rain fall upwards. Because think about it, rain's technically falling upwards, right? And plants grow upside down. But so weak that it still has buildings like the CN Tower standing high. No, the CN Tower would have to eventually sideways go down with the gravity. It doesn't make sense. The natural laws of density and buoyancy literally just makes our whole world make sense. You don't need gravity. Gravity is not real. First of all, have you guys even Googled gravity? Nobody can explain gravity. Not scientists, not nobody. It's just a mythical creature that this Isaac guy made up and pulled it out of his ass because a tree fell from... Like, come on. Come on. So, for example, the reason why... Um, a helium balloon rises up and a regular air-filled balloon goes down is because air is made out of nitrogen and oxygen. Meanwhile, helium isn't. Helium is lighter than air. So of course, helium will go up and anything with air will go down. Heavy stuff, fall down. Light stuff, go up because we're flat. Like, it's just, use your own brain. You don't need anything else but your brain. Newton started his theory about universal gravitation, which he used to explain orbiting celestial bodies. Newton claimed that the sun, the earth, the moon, the planets, and stars, so gravity caused them all to orbit around the most massive nearby bodies. So not only was gravity selective about which objects it caused to fall and which objects it allowed to rise, gravity was also able to perform different functions on different scales because People, buildings, and oceans, it caused to stick to the earth. While on the planetary scale, gravity, al gravity allegedly caused moons to orbit around planets and planets to orbit around stars. But the question is, how and why would gravity cause planets to orbit the sun and people to stick to the earth? Gravity should either cause people to float around in suspended circular orbits around the earth, or it should cause the earth, moon, and planets to be pulled and crashed into the sun. So he's using gravity in both cases, but it's doing the complete opposite thing. Oh, so maybe gravity has many functions and it can do many things. Then again, it is invisible and nobody knows what it is and it's never been proven and we don't need it and we live without it because we live on a flat surface. Just bro, do your research. And if you're going to do your research, do not use Google. At the very least, you can use TikTok. But like, just, bro, come on. Come on. It's so easy. It's so easy. And another thing, water. Water needs to be leveled. No matter what, water cannot stick to anything. It will fall off. Whether it's in a cup, no matter how big the cup is, it will level itself, whether it's a pool, whether whatever it is. But now all of a sudden we have to be retards and we have to be stupid enough to believe that the water is just going to stick to a ball because of gravity. Don't even get me started on curvature. Nobody has ever seen the Earth's curvature. Nowhere. The only place we've ever seen it are those CGI pictures from NASA, from movies, and that's about it. So I'm going to show you about, I think it's 30 pilots telling us that they have never, no matter what distance they're going, they have never had to turn. They are always like this, whether it's this way, whether it's this way. They have never curved because there's no curvature on Earth. There is none. It's a lie. And think about it like this. No matter how far you are, whether you're in Niagara or wherever you are, how many miles away, you can always see the CN Tower skyline. At some point, shouldn't the Earth be curving and us not be able to see any standing buildings? No, no matter where you are, you will see the skyline of anywhere. Make it make sense. Do you guys know who Werner Von Braun is? Well, he's the one who makes rocket ships. He makes all the rocket technology, all of that. Um, he's actually considered the father of NASA. So when he died, do you know what he wrote on his headstone? 
he wrote Psalms 19.1, which is, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Now you tell me why someone who doesn't believe in the firmament and doesn't believe he can't believe in that if he also believes in outer space because the firmament prevents us from going to outer space so exactly why would he write that on his his headstone before he died because he had nothing to lose and he said the truth before he left we all know that rocket ships don't have an off button they don't have a curve button they just go straight up into space right okay so just enjoy these little videos and I'm going to show you of actual experiments of rocket ships and the part they don't show you. And also just to let you guys know, this video has only been about the facts that you guys already know. This is what NASA tells you. This is what is just a known fact. So my next video is going to be about my actual opinions and like actual things. But if you research into flat earth, and you still don't believe it then you your mk ultra mind control is beyond fixing and that's very unfortunate and you just have to be a buffoon at this point to still believe it and i mean i'm not knocking anyone but like shit it is what it is apparently the sun is 92 million miles away i want you to just go outside and go look at the sun and you tell me that that's 92 million miles away. Oh wait, your eyes are lying to you because NASA. <laughs> and on top of that, um, if the sun actually was in outer space 92 million miles away, we wouldn't have angled sun rays. It would just have to be one straight beam coming in, which it is not. Another thing, look at um, rainbows. Why does a rainbow take the same shape every time? because it's going to the curvature of the firmament, AKA the dome. Like, dude, like you, like just use your own eyes, use your own brain and just, just come on. 